Today, we discuss some special zombie jerks in Seven Days to Die. Now, we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Seven Days to Die has a wide variety of zombie jerks that you must contend with. However, some of these zombies have special characteristics that set them apart from your run-of-the-mill zombie variety. These aren't your standard Arlene, Marlene, and Darlene we're talking about here, or your standard Mojo and Bo we're talking about. So today we're going to take a closer look at some of these specialty zombies in Seven Days to Die. We'll demonstrate what sets them apart from your average zombie and some of the special dangers that they pose to the player. The first zombie we're going to take a look at is the Spider Zombie. Now the Spider Zombie comes in three variations. You have your standard Spider Zombie, you have the Feral Spider Zombie, and you have the Radiated Variation. Your standard zombie comes with 150 hit points. The feral spider has 285 hit points and the radiated spider has 541 hit points. The radiated spider also has the ability to regenerate health. So what exactly makes the spider special? Well the first thing that makes the spider special is it sits very low to the ground. It only occupies the bottom one block. So as you see here we've got two blocks right here. The spider zombie only sits up as high as this first block, so it is not nearly as tall as some of the other zombies. This can lead to some difficulties with regards to base management, base building, that kind of thing, because you will have to keep in mind that zombies only occupy that bottom block. This also poses an additional danger because spiders are more likely to cause you leg injuries. They're more likely to sprain or break your leg when they attack you. And of course, there is one more thing that sets the spider zombies apart, so I'm going to go ahead and turn their AI back on and we're gonna dance around there we go now they're demonstrating the spider zombies actually jump and they can jump very tall distances they can jump very far distances so not only do you have to worry about them sitting so low to the ground you also have to worry about their ability to jump. Another unique feature of the spider zombie is the sound that they make. They are very, very creepy zombies indeed. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill these guys off and just listen to their death noise. Oh man, that is creepy. So the spider zombies make a very distinct noise. When you hear them screeching, you'll know that you are facing a spider zombie, even if you cannot see him. The spider zombie can make for a very dangerous adversary when you combine the fact that they sit so low to the ground with their leaping ability, that makes for a dangerous combination indeed. Do not take the spider zombies lightly. The next zombie we want to take a look at is the foot Football player zombie. Now this zombie is not going to be in the game for long. They are actually talking about taking this zombie out of the game, but currently it is still in Seven Days to Die, so I went ahead and added it to the list. The football player zombie has 250 50 hit points. Now what makes these guys unique is there is only one variant of the football player zombie. So I'm going to go ahead and back up here and we're going to turn his AI back on. Now one variant, yet it is daytime and he is still running. This zombie can spawn in very, very early in the game and in specific POIs they are very prevalent, but they run. That makes them incredibly dangerous, especially in the early game of Seven Days to Die. Not only do they run, they also have one of the faster running animations. It's a second fastest, only behind the like Arlene and Biker Zombie type of running animation. So they are extremely fast, they spawn very, very early in the game, and can be difficult for new players to take down. So just a word of advice to all those new players out there, be very, very careful if you come across football player zombies. They can be extremely dangerous, especially for newer players. The next special zombie that we want to talk about is the burnt zombie. Now typically speaking these guys will only spawn in the burnt forest or wasteland biomes and in certain POIs. The burnt zombie has 150 hit points and during the day they're pretty slow. They don't actually move very fast. However once the sun go goes down their running animation is one of the faster running animations in the game. So be very careful once the sun goes down when dealing with burnt 
burnt zombies. Now the characteristic that makes these guys special is when they hit you, they have the chance to set you on fire. While the fire damage that these bad boys impose is not too severe, it is a possibility and a rather unique feature when it comes to zombie jerks. So I felt the burnt zombie deserved a place on this list. The next zombie we want to take a look at is the crawler zombie. The first thing we want to point out when it comes to the crawler zombie is like the spider zombie, they sit very, very low. And they honestly can be easy to overlook. They can be easy to miss. Especially if you come across a crawler out in the grass, sometimes they actually sit lower than the grass and can be very hard to spot. So even though you may hear the crawler zombie around, you may not know exactly where it's at until it is at your feet punching you in the legs. Now, believe it or not, there are actually two variations of the crawler zombie. There's your regular crawler that has 80 hit points, and then there is the feral crawler, which has 152 hit points. Now that is one of the only major differences between the crawlers. Generally speaking, when a zombie gets bumped up to the next level, to the feral level, they run all the time. Crawlers, however, crawl. So their, their speed does not change whatsoever. So if I back up, as you see, they are moving at the exact same rate. One is a feral, one is regular, yet they have the exact same movement speed. This is very unique when it comes to zombies because the variations usually have different movement speeds. But again, as you can see, they are sitting very, very low to the ground and they can be difficult to see. But once you do see them, they're pretty easy to take out. They do not have the most hit points. Even the feral version only has 152 hit points. So you don't have to worry about them too much. However, they are special in their unique characteristics and did deserve a place on this list. The next zombie on our list is the Screamer Zombie. Now, I'm sure if you've played Seven Days to Die long enough, you have encountered this little lady once or twice in your journey. They can be both a benefit and a detriment to your gameplay. There are three variations of the Screamer Zombie. You have your standard Screamer Zombie that has 75 hit points. You have a Feral variant that has 100 142 hit points, and you have the radiated variant that has 270 hit points. Now, if we back up a little bit, let's start taking a look at what sets this little lady apart from other zombies in the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on her AI, and uh, we're gonna watch and listen. So as you see, the Screamer Zombie has the fastest running animation in the game. That hands down at the side, Oh, there she goes, she's screaming. Hands down at the side, bent over, running straight forward. That's the fastest running animation in the game. So the feral and radiated versions have the fastest running animation in the game. The, uh, the regular standard is not very fast at all. But that is just the movement specialty of the uh, Screamer Zombie. The main factor that sets this little lady apart is the ability to scream. When that zombie jerk sees you, when she sees you, she does that. She screams, and when she screams, what she's doing is calling in all her zombie jerk buddies to come and join the party. That scream will, will cause a lot of other zombies to spawn into the world, and they will know where you're at. They'll come and punch you right in the face. Another name for the screamer zombie is the scout. If you actually look at the console, when the screamers spawn into the world, they are actually, it actually says spawning scout. So their job is to find you, they go to heat sources, they find you, they scream to alert all the other zombies, and the zombies come to the screamer party and they try to destroy your stuff. Okay, you ladies need to be quiet. 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 No more screaming. There we go. So the Screamer Zombies can be extremely beneficial because they are pretty much endless XP farms. They will keep spawning in zombies for you to kill. However, they can be extremely detrimental at the same time if you are not looking to farm experience. They will keep screaming, keep spawning in more zombies that you will have to deal with. Be very, very careful when, when dealing with the Screamers. Unless you are planning on farming Screamer Hordes, kill them as soon as you can before they get a Screamer scream off, otherwise you are going to have a whole bunch of other zombie jerks that you're going to have to contend with. Next up on our list of specialty zombies is the cop zombie. Now these big boys are no joke and can be extremely annoying. There are three different variations of the cop zombie. You have your standard policeman, which has 250 hit points. You have the feral cop that has 475 hit points. And then you have the radiated cop that has 90 
902 hit points. And again, like all radiated variations of zombies, the radiated cop does have the ability to regenerate health. So what exactly makes these guys special? Well, there's actually a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is demonstrate the first specialty of the cop zombie, as well as the running speed. So let's back up a little bit here. Let's turn on their AI and we'll be able to see them in movement. So there he's going and okay, there we go. That is what makes them special. They're the first thing that makes them special. The cop zombies actually have a projectile attack. They spit at you, which is not very nice at all, Mr. Zombie. Not good at all. No, you cannot spit at me. No, bad, bad cop zombie. I said no. Bad cop zombie. So that's the first thing that sets the cop zombie apart from other zombies in the game. They do have the ability to spit a projectile at you. Now we're gonna take a look at the second thing that sets the cop zombie apart. So for that, I've come out to the middle of the desert here because I do not want this cop to damage my base at all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot him and, and damage him a little bit. Let's get a little closer. I am in God mode for this, so uh, I do not want to die. So let's go ahead and take a few pot shots at him. And we're going to be listening for a very distinct sound. There it is. And... Boom! There it is. So as you guys heard, uh, once you get the cop down to a certain amount of health, you'll start hearing that heartbeat, that, that rapid heartbeat sound. That is the cue that the cop is about to explode. You want to make sure and kill the cop before he explodes. If you do not, he will explode and he will damage your structures and he can deal a lot of damage to you as well. So do not mess around when it comes to cops. Do not let them explode. Kill them as soon as you can. Allow Allowing them to explode is a very bad idea. And speaking of explosions, this brings us to the last special zombie on our list today. And that is the demolition zombie, this guy right here. These guys are no joke. The demolition zombies have 1,000 hit points, so they have quite a large health bar. Plus, they are one of the most heavily armored zombies in the game, which means your standard rounds will deal a lot less damage. HP rounds have no effect on the demolition zombie whatsoever. So your best bet against these bad boys is to use that armor piercing round. So not only does the demolition zombie have a lot of hit points and they're heavily armored, but they also pack a punch. These bad boys can destroy your base with their bare hands in a matter of moments. They get a huge damage bonus to blocks. They can tear through your base very, very quickly. And if that were not enough, they also come with this nice shiny green button on their chest. Now, if you notice on his chest, he also has a little belt that is full of explosives. And those explosives are wired up to that little green button right there. Meaning if you activate or you hit that button, either punch it, shoot it, any way that you activate it, it will set a timer and this demolition zombie will explode. Now the cop explosions are bad, but the cop explosions pay in comparison to the demolition explosions. These explosions will demolish your base, and if you're standing anywhere near to a demo when it explodes, say goodbye to this cruel world. So once again, I'm in God mode. We're gonna go ahead and activate this button, and I wanna show you how destructive this actually is. Again, we're out in the desert. Got a nice little pit here, but kinda keep an eye on this, uh, on this structure right here. Just keep an eye on our surroundings it is going to change very, very soon. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that button. Boom, it starts beeping and boom. Oh, look at that. We went down a whole nother level and destroyed all the blocks around. So one explosion destroyed every single one of these blocks. Now, imagine that that zombie was in your horde base or attacking your horde base. For instance, let's come over here. We'll take a look at my little horde base that I have set up here. I've demonstrated this in previous videos, but let's say the zombie started uh, exploded on the walkway here and it destroyed your walkway. It would not take very many demo explosions in order to completely demolish your base. Demolition zombies are no joke and you should take them out as soon as you can. But while you're taking them down, you should also be very, very careful not to hit that button. If you hit that button, you have a very small window to kill them before they explode. If they explode, they will damage your structures and they can potentially 
potentially kill you with the blast as well. So do not take demolition zombies lightly and be very careful when taking them out. In Seven Days to Die, not every zombie jerk is created equal. Many of these zombies have special characteristics or abilities that set them apart. So make sure to keep that in mind as you are out and about in the zombie apocalypse. Now if you'd like to see some more Seven Days to Die tutorials, I've created a very special playlist that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.